Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I am going to discuss about some of the methods of file class of .NET. This is going to be a couple of videos because the file class has multiple methods and it is not possible to cover everything in one video. So I'm going to break this file class methods implementation and going through all the methods of file class into two different videos. The file class is mainly used for operations on file in a file system. And the operation can be creating a file, deleting an existing file, reading content of a file, moving a file from one location to another, renaming a file, it can also be used for appending content to an existing file as well as copying file. The file class is part of system.io namespace and all the methods of the file class are static. Now static method as you know can be sometimes very complex during unit testing but that can be solved using a class called file info, which I'm also going to cover in subsequent videos. So let's start with a simple task. First, what we can do is we can create a new file using the file class. So for creating a new file, we can do file dot create. And when we create, we need to give a path. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that when we provide a path to the method, this method or any other method with the file class, they have to be well formed. Meaning, if we have to give, let's say, c colon slash temp, it needs to be in the format c colon slash c colon double slash temp or we can do at c colon slash temp so we can create a file and then we'll give a file name so let's say test dot txt and then here there are few overload of the create first one doesn't take anything second one takes a buffer size buffer size is the number of byte buffered for read or write to the file. And the third one also has something called file option. So let's, I'm not going to use either of these overload. I'm just going to use plain, just the file path, but I'll just show you what file option is. So let's say that we give buffer size is 1000. The file option is one of the file options value that describes how to create or override a file. So when we do a file option, it can be none, which is as if file option is not provided. And then asynchronous indicate when the file is created for asynchronous, it can be created asynchronously. Delete on close indicates that the file is automatically deleted when no longer is used. Encrypted indicates that the file is encrypted and can be decrypted only by using the same user account used for encryption. So for encryption, there is a method which we are going to cover in another video. None, which we already discussed. And then random access indicates the file is accessed randomly the system can use this hint to optimize the file caching. And then sequential scan, which indicates that the file is to be accessed sequentially before, from the beginning. The system can use this hint to optimize the file caching. And the last one is write through, which indicates that the system should write through any intermediate cache and go directly through the disk. So I'll go ahead and just do this. 
And I also have this C colon temp open, as you can see, the folder is empty right now. And I'm just going to run this application. And once I run this, I should see the file text.txt created inside of that folder. The code is executed. Now if I go back to this file, I can see text.txt. But it doesn't have any content because we did not write anything. So the next thing what we can do is we can write something into this file. So for writing into file, we can use So for writing, we can have methods like write all bytes, write all byte async. It's the same thing, just it will be done asynchronously. Write on lines and li write on bytes and write on byte asynchronous takes a byte array. Write all lines and write on lines async. Both of them takes an array or an enumerable of string as a content. And then finally, we have write all, write all text or write all text async, which takes the content as a string. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start first with write all text async. And for the path, we can give the same path. Let's give an await here. And here for the string content, we can say, this is a test message. That's about it. Now let's go ahead and run this function. And once we run this, we should be able to go and see some content. And you can see there's one KB. And if we open the file, you can see that this is test message is showing up in the file. Now what I can do is I'm just going to go ahead and delete this and uh, we're going to use the next overload. Now we could have appended also using append, but I'm not going to sh show append in this video. I'm going to show the append probably in the next video. So let's focus on write. And then for write, the other one we can use is write all lines. And as I said, it takes an array. So what we can do here is we can do new and a string array. So we can give this and then maybe another string. So we have this is test message and another test message. And let's run this. And we should see the exact same behavior where the file will contain the two text messages that we have written. This is test and another test because we are writing an array of text. They will be in two different lines as expected. Now let's again delete the data and finally we can use a byte array. So for byte array, we can say var content is equal to this is a test message, let's say. And for the byte array, here we can do encoding dot and encoding is part of the system.test namespace. So let me add that. And we can use UTF-8 for encoding. UTF-8 dot get bytes. And this is going to return an array of byte from the string. So we can pass content here. So this is going to give a byte array. We have to change this method from write all lines to write byte async and let me get rid of this and that should be it. Now if I run this program, I should see this text getting added. Though we are using a byte array, but ultimately in the content, it will be this is a test message. So 
So now if I go back here, I see this is the test message. So right now I'm not going to delete the message. We went through all the right. Now let's look into the read messages. So for read, similar to write, we have multiple read option. So for read, we can start with we can start with read all bytes, read all byte async, read all lines, read all text. So what we can do is we can start with read all byte async. It's fast one. And here, read all byte just needs the file path. We don't need anything else because we're not writing. So we can just get rid of that. And here we can say var content is equal to read all bytes. Now this is a byte array. And then what we can do is we can do console dot write line and we can do just like before encoding dot utf8 dot get string and get string we can give the array of bytes that's pretty much it and now if we run this application we should see the text this is a test message and as you can see, we see that as expected. Similar to read all bytes, we can do read all text, read all text async, which is going to return a string. So we can just print out the string as is, and we can see the exact same response as before. And then finally, what we can do is we can do read all lines async. That's the last one. Now, when we do read all lines, it's going to return an array of string. So here we can, we know for sure there's only one. So we can just say fast. There's only one line. So it will return the fast line, which is just a single string. And we should see the exact same response as before. And as we can see, this is a test message as expected. And then finally, now here so far we have seen how to use file class to create a file. We also seen how to use file class to write item into file. And then now we saw how to use file class to read items from the file. And then finally for today's video, I'm going to cover how to delete a file. And then in next video, I'll cover some of the other features of file. For example, how to append items to an existing file, then renaming a file and things of that nature. So for deleting a file, it is straightforward. We can just use delete and there is no await and delete is a void method, so it doesn't return anything. So we can just do this. And now if we run this application, we should see this file being deleted. So let's run this application. And if we go here, the application is completed running and here we can see the file is deleted. The folder is right now empty. And this is exactly what we expected out of this method. So that is all I wanted to cover for today's video. As I mentioned, this is first of the video in the file class series. I'm going to walk through the rest of the method in the subsequent videos. So if you like these videos, please give me a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, you think you are getting value out of my channel, please subscribe to my channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.